All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm back with my very special guest, Thomas Woods, Jr., the author, most recently, of Rollback, Repealing Big Government Before the Coming Fiscal Collapse. It's published by Regnery, a very fine publishing company. And uh, Mr. Woods, as you're well aware, there's a lot of... Uh, talk these days of the need for a balanced budget amendment, but you disagree. Uh, would you tell the folks why you disagree with that? Well, I'm not opposed to a balanced budget per se, but I have a, a few concerns about it. It's, it's, I think it's the typical D.C. distraction. Uh, just get a lot of our energies poured into this for years and years to get a balanced budget amendment. And meanwhile, uh, every balanced budget amendment that's been proposed and that has any likelihood of passage and ratification has an escape hatch in it. You know, if 60% of Congress thinks we really need to have an unbalanced budget, you can still have one. Well, I think we know where that's going. The, f- the federal government is very good at accounting tricks, even though they accuse the private sector of that. They're the champions. So they'll just take things off budget in order to, to pretend they've got a balanced budget. I mean, it's just, it's just more smoke and mirrors. I, mean, I want to know, what's your budget plan for right now? If you want a balanced budget right now, go ahead and do it. And also, I think our problem is not per se an unbalanced budget. I, I wouldn't want to balance this budget by taxing the population at 80 percent. I'm sure we could balance the budget. But that's not my priority. My priority is limiting the government, and and that that's the more important thing. And, of course, I would like to do that with a balanced budget, a really low, low, low balanced budget. But I, I we could have a balanced budget right now with an 80 percent tax rate, but that's not the priority. And really what, what I want to do above all, I mean, more than any public policy initiative or constitutional amendment, is just to change the way people think. I mean, like the purpose of rollback is that I – Years and years I've been in this position where I try to talk to the left, and they come back at me with, well, if we ever balance the budget or cut back on government, what would happen? I mean, everybody would be working for a dollar a day, and you know, the, if it weren't for government, we wouldn't have any art or science, and everyone would be ignorant, and your, your kids would be working in mines all day, getting their limbs blown off. I mean, this is the stuff that we got in the seventh grade, and basically we're not going to make any progress against federal spending as long as people believe this cartoonish seventh grade version of events that government is our great protector we'd all be helpless idiots without them and so we need to have trillions and trillions of dollars spent no that's really what I'm, I'm, I'm a- aiming at, is that the whole way of thinking, it's not just one public policy that we need to change. It's this whole juvenile mentality that the left has, er, has taught us to embrace. All right. Uh, I, I, I will now uh, mention the hated words, Federal Reserve. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you know, you attack the Federal Reserve in your in your book rollback yeah why don't you uh, explain to our listeners sure sure now it's funny in a federal reserve a lot of people hear this and they think i have no idea what on god's green earth this is i'll never understand no that's just what they want you to think uh the federal reserve is the central bank of the u.s it has the monopoly power to create legal tender money uh, out of thin air and it would have been cheeky and and uh, you know off the wall five years ago to criticize the Federal Reserve, but now it's almost fashionable. It's strange how things have changed so quickly. But I've got a chapter in Rollback about the Federal Reserve. It's another example of the propaganda that we get. Wherever would we be without our wise overlords in charge of the money? They're the experts. They're guiding the economy. We'd be lost without them. I don't accept this narrative. I, I think these are people who are largely responsible for the situation we're in by tinkering with the economy for years uh, under Alan Greenspan. And what I show is that the usual arguments you get in the establishment media, which are that thanks to the Fed, we've had much a much more stable economy. Our recessions haven't been as long or as deep. And you stupid Neanderthals who question it you know, would reverse all this wonderful progress, is that that's just a lot of baloney. The statistics do not bear that out. Uh, the Fed's record has been has been not good, 
And it, what it's done to our dollar is it's made the dollar lose 96% of its value. Well, I mean, well, if that's success, what would failure be? They're, they're, they're down in the basement of the Treasury printing dollar signs on rolls of toilet paper as fast as they can. That's what they're doing. And, and of course, that's just putting scotch tape, you know, on, on a collapsed building. I mean, this is, this is not r- real recovery. This is a, a sugar high they're putting the economy on. And, and this sugar high is not even doing well. They still can't get unemployment down, even with all their tricks. I mean, it may be that the economy really needs to adjust and have real growth, not phony baloney, fake money-driven growth. Yeah, and the uh, unemployment statistics are phony, too. I mean, if you add the people who aren't even looking for work anymore, uh, you know, it, it, it's what, 16 or some per, some odd percent, which Yeah, is the horrendous. government's been doing that for, for years to, to make it seem like things are better than they are. We, we, we should take everything they say with a great assault. Well, uh, unfortunately, we've just about run out of time, Mr. Woods. I, I, I want to thank you very, very much for... Uh, being my guest, and I want to recommend uh, to everyone the book Roll Back, Repealing Big Government Before the Coming Fiscal Collapse, because the way things are going, folks, the fiscal collapse is just inevitable. It's a train coming right down the track, Satchis. And uh, Mr. Woods, I hope that we can look forward to having you as our guest again. Well, the pleasure was mine. I would love that. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thomas E. Woods, Jr., ladies and gentlemen, roll back, repealing big government before the coming fiscal collapse.